In this video, we're looking at Dr. Taylor's notes for preference schedules. Here's the idea. You may have participated in elections where you were only allowed to vote for your first choice. It might be more fair in some situations to be able to give a preference, to be able to say what your first, second, and third choice are, and so on. In, in subsequent videos, we'll look at how to decide the winner in this kind of a preference balloting situation. But in this video, we're going to look at a preference schedule, that is how we count up the votes that have been cast. Here's the idea. We've got 12 people represented by the 12 columns in this table, each of them casting a preference vote. That is, from the choices that they have, A, B, and C, they are going to each uh, choose uh, a first choice, a second choice, and a third choice. So, for example, um, the first person chose B to be their first choice, A to be their second choice, and C to be their third choice. It will be good for us to understand what all the different preferences are that are available. For example, somebody could choose A to be their first choice. Now, once they've chosen A to be their first choice, and there's only three choices, then they could either choose B or C to be their second choice, and once that choice is made, then the third choice is made for them. <clears throat> that, that, that is, they have no other choice but to choose C if they chose A and then B, and then the third choice would have to be C. If they chose A and then C, then the third choice would have to be B. And here are the choices for B's and C's. So there's a, really a total of six different possible preferences. And what we're going to do is go along and just count up how many people voted for each preference. So we're looking for all the people that voted A, B, C. That's not it. That's not it. Looking across. That's, whoa. There's nobody that voted for A, B, C. So we're going to write a zero here. Now we're looking for all those that voted for A, C, B. There are some of those. There's one. A, C, B, there's two. A, C, B, there's three. And that's all of them, right? So, we want to write a 3 right here. Because there are three people that made that preference in the votes. Let's, uh, let me just change my color here. Now let's worry about all those that voted for B, A, C. So I come across, I look for any B, A, C's. There's one of them. B, C, A, B, A, C, there's two of them. B, A, C, there's three of them. B, A, C, there's four of them. Let's check and see if I got them all. Okay, one, two, three, four of them that chose for B, A, C. Put a four there. Let's pick another color and look for all those that voted for B, C, A. B, C, A, there's one. And the others for B, C, A. No other B, C, A's, so we're going to write one here. So now we're looking for C, A, B. Let's see if I've got any other colors up here. Try this one. So we're looking for a C, A, B. C, A, B. One. Two. Three. So 
we got four there. And that leaves us with the zero here. There's no CBAs. So usually to complete a schedule, we revise the preference schedule to eliminate these columns that have zero in them. And so down here, we're interested in, in three people had the choice of A, C, B. And uh, and four people had the choice of maybe I made my pen a little bit too small. B A C one person had a choice of B C A and four people had a choice of, that's a four of a C A B okay now when you do it use better handwriting than what I'm using here there'll be two things that we'll ask you to do one is given a, a bunch of of uh, preference ballots be able to produce a preference schedule the other way around looking at a preference schedule be able to read what it's telling you it's telling you that three people had this preference four people had BAC as a preference one person had BCA as a preference and four people had a CBA as a preference okay that's called a preference schedule we haven't decided who the winner is we've just tallied the vote in a sense Okay.